Hey, my name is Thomas Brooks and I'm the developer of lithophanemaker.com. You see in front of me here the Palette 2 Pro. And in this video, I'm going to review the Palette 2 Pro all the way from unboxing it to printing out the items that you see in front of me here, including this special item, which is a palette of a different type. This will be the color palette for the full color lithophane design tool that I'll put on lithophanemaker.com. So if you're interested in finding out more about that, please subscribe and I will talk more about it in future videos and then also more towards the end of this video. So the first subject that we're gonna cover with respect to the Palette 2 Pro is the unboxing. My box cutter. We have a manual. And then we have the pallet on the very top, surprisingly heavy. We have boxes inside of the box, inside of the box. Power adapters. Power cable. Sticker, another sticker. Cutter blades, Velcro stickies, thumb screws, Velcro attached thing an SC card, an extruder idler, board, pen looking things, I have no idea what those are, another board, a screwdriver, set of PTFE tube, got the stand, setup time. So here you can see my pallet 2 chilling on my table. From the outside you can see the ports for the filament going in down here at the bottom, there are four of them. Uh, you've got an LCD screen and you've got the PTFE tube coming out. It's really easy to take off the cover to the pallet, it's magnetic, you just pop it out. Inside of the pallet there are four extruders at the bottom that guide each one of your different filament types into the splice core. The splice core and just about everything in the pallet can be taken off easily by turning this thumb screw right here. And you can see what's inside of the splice core. Uh, this is clearly a heating element that melts the two filaments together and it's easy to put back in. After filaments are spliced together, they're pushed up with this extruder here into the buffer zone. And the buffer zone keeps track of how much filament you have extruded, and it also gives you some buffer so that you can splice at the same time as filament is pulled into your printer. At the top here, you have the PTFE tube that connects the printer to the pallet. This PTFE tube goes directly to the extruder gear on your 3D printer. Now it's very easy to put the cover back on. Voila! Now it's ready to use again to 3D print. So after I finished setting up the Palette 2 Pro, I went about printing their test prints, uh, which you can see right here. It's the mosaic manufacturing symbol. Um, I started out with this beauty, and you can see that I ran into some pretty serious problems, uh, massive under extrusion, you might say. I had been dealing with this for a while on my CR-10S, I decided to just go ahead and upgrade and I installed a new E3D V6 hot end as well as a Bontech BMG extruder and that really improved the print quality that I'm getting out of my CR-10S so I have to recommend it. Um, after I did that I started getting prints that were significantly better. Um, this was the next thing that I printed with the Palette 2 Pro is again their, their test piece. I wasn't getting the kind of bed adhesion that I wanted, so I went ahead and upgraded my capacitive sensor to an inductive sensor, which has better repeatability. So then I printed this guy again, which, oops, which is um, basically the same quality on the front, but you can see a very good first layer. Something else you should notice about these is if you look at it from the side, you can see that there's a lot of separation between the layers. So. This is a very simple test print. There's a lot of room for error that they've built into it the way that it's been designed. Um, but after printing this, I was pretty confident. I felt good. So I decided to do something a little bit more difficult, which was apparently bad because I ended up with these rainbow unicorns over here. My daughter liked them anyways, so much that she played with them enough to break off one of their legs each. But anyway, you can see that they're a total disaster. Um, I didn't get the layers correct at all. Uh, the colors are supposed to be divided out in a logical fashion, more like these over here. And it's just kind of a hodgepodge of randomness. And the reason for that 
<clears throat> is my pings and my pongs. The ping is the amount that your 3D printer extrudes divided by the amount that the pallet is expecting it to extrude. The pong is the amount of filament that the pallet tube pushes through it divided by the amount of filament that the software expects the pallet to to push through it. So with these guys, I had pings of about 95% which means basically that my E-steps were not yet calibrated. So what I did was I just took my E-step number, um, multiplied it by 100, and then divided it by 95 to increase the E-step. And then I reset the printer profile on the pallet, and I, I ran it again, and I got this print, and I was pretty happy with that. And then I got this print, and I was pretty happy with that too. So then I decided to do this guy over again, and I used the exact same G-code. I got something completely different. And then also, for some reason, it just stopped here. So I'm not exactly sure what happened there because it was the exact same G-code. It was the exact same file. The only thing I did was change the firmware of my printer and change the printer profile in here. So after dealing with these unicorns over here, I decided to just go straight easy mode because these unicorns are actually a fairly difficult print. The difficulty in printing with a pallet is proportional to the number of splices it has to make. What you want to make it easy is a short print with few splices per layer. And that is what Mr. Lizardman is over here. The full color lithophane prints are actually gonna be easier because they're gonna be so short. Um, you're only gonna have like four or five layers with um, four colors in them, so that would be 20 splices-ish. But I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. You can take a look at them. He's orange and, and blue and white. The colors are very well separated as, as you would like. Something that is glaringly obvious when you see these prints are the purge blocks. So, I mean, here's my, my three-legged unicorn and here's my other three-legged unicorn. They're significantly smaller than the purge block required to make them. So this thing is monstrous and takes a lot of filament. There are things that are being done to fix that um, that haven't yet been implemented in the slicers that I'm using. And those are things like, instead of printing a block, just print some other object. There are also solutions that involve wiping the transition into the infill. There are things that are gonna be done to reduce the amount of waste, but it's always gonna be there to some extent because the actual points where the two filaments are spliced together, the, the filament just isn't right there. The diameter's a little bit off. So you can see here the full color lithophane palette and you can see all of the colors that will be available to print once I get the full color lithophane tool out there. And guys, I run off of the jollies that you guys give me every time you like and subscribe. That's what keeps me going to make things like this. So please consider liking and subscribing. Hit that button down there, ring the bell comment, tell me what your favorite lithophane tool is, tell me what you want me to do next. Like, what, what was that? What's that stuff behind me, you ask? Well, that first item is a lithophane lamp with a Lord of the Rings theme to it. The next thing is a lithophane light box of the Avengers. And then we have a Minas Tirith lamp, which I made. And then finally, we have a bust of myself. What? Like, you don't have a bust of yourself? <laughs> Maybe you just want to make a bust of your parents or a significant other, then leave in the comments that you would like to see a tutorial on how to make that bust. So in summary, it took me about 15 hours to get to this point where it's working this well, including the upgrades that I made to my CR-10S. This cost $700. This is the Palette 2 Pro. Now there's also just a regular Palette 2. It's definitely possible to print really cool stuff with 
even just the palette too at $500. So I know I've thrown a lot at you here, but the most important thing to remember is that I run off of the jollies I get whenever I open up that YouTube studio app and it says, one more subscriber. It's amazing and you're amazing and you could be that amazing that happens. You could do that right now by clicking that subscribe button and liking and commenting and doing all the amazing things that I know are inside of you. Thank you for coming here. Uh, I hope that this video was useful to you. And until next time.